Every measured quantity has significant figures. Some measured quantities have additional zeros that are not significant. So we need to count significant figures and tell which figures are significant and which ones aren't. In short, all non-zeros are significant. Zeros might be or they might not be. So if you have a measurement, any non-zero is definitely significant and then we have to decide whether the zeros are or aren't. I use the box and dot method to determine the sig figs in a given quantity. And here's how you do it. You identify the leftmost and rightmost non-zeros in your quantity. Then you draw a box around the leftmost and the rightmost non-zero and everything in between them. Something like that. We've found the leftmost non-zero and the rightmost non-zero. We've drawn a box around them and everything that's in between them. So clearly, anything that is not in the box, that is anything that's on the left side of the box or anything on the right side of the box, is necessarily a zero. Everything that's in the box is significant. So that's the first thing. Zeros on the left are not significant. Zeros on the right are significant if there's a decimal point anywhere. If there's not a decimal point anywhere in that quantity, then those zeros on the right side are not significant. Yes decimal, yes significant. Let's try a few of these. In the left column, if we draw our boxes, we're going to find the leftmost non-zero and the rightmost non-zero. We're going to draw a box around them and anything that's in between them. Then you can see that the stuff that is not in the box is all zeros. We have to ask ourselves, are these zeros significant? In the first example, 80.0, the zeros on the right side of the box are significant if there's a decimal point anywhere. So that quantity has three significant figures. Zeros on the left are never significant. So the next one has only two sig figs. In the next example, zeros on the right side of the box are significant if there's a decimal point anywhere. So that's going to have six significant figures. And the quantity at the bottom has three significant figures because zeros on the left are never significant. If we go to the right side then, we can draw a mental box around the 9 and the 4 and the 4. The zeros to the left of the box are not significant, so that should have three significant figures. Around the 2,000, we would draw a box only around the 2. The zeros to the right of the box are not significant because there's no decimal point anywhere in that quantity. The box for the next quantity, 124.00, the box would go right there. The zeros on the right are significant because there's a decimal point. This last one would have three sig figs. In scientific notation, the exponent has no effect on the number of sig figs. So the only thing we need to do is look at this quantity in the front, in front of the times 10, to determine how many significant figures it will have. So this first one should have three sig figs. The next one should have three. This one should have four. In essence, we're just doing the box and dot thing to the number that's in front of the times 10. And the bottom number will have two significant figures. Now, note that the bottom quantity is not in proper scientific notation, but if we turn it into proper scientific notation, it would again have two significant figures.